How's it going everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is the third part of What If Deku Was a Ghoul. I hope you all do enjoy it, and if you all end up doing so, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help this channel out as I do upload every single day on this channel. I thank you all for watching, and without any further delay, let's begin with this video. Deku steps out of the portal, looking around, just seeing a blank forest. As the smell of smoke fills his nostrils, he looks up to see that blue fire blanketed the sky above him. The entire forest was on fire. As Izuku saw this, he ended up taking a couple steps forward before looking back towards the other villains behind him. He would mention towards them that they likely only had a good 20 minutes to go in and find Bakugo and then get out. If not, they most likely would all die either by just breathing in too much smoke or by being burned alive. The rest of the villains would note this before scattering out going off to look for Bakugo Kotsky. Izuku would go off looking for him as well, as he would be stumbling around just the different forest area, hopping around from tree branch to tree branch, when all of a sudden he would stop. Hearing talking, Izuku would end up covering his face with a mask that he had been given by one of, by one of the villains there, just to conceal his identity. It's basically just a mask that doesn't cover any of his eyes, just covers his mouth, so that they can't really identify him without 50% of his face. Plus, since his eyes change when he activates his cork, they really can't identify him at all. So, as Izuku's eyes would change, completely going black with a little bit of red shining in the night, he would stare down towards them when the sun to the two girls down there, being Suyu Asu and Ochaku Uraka, who would both get a bad feeling about what was going on. Izuku's stomach would rumble before he would jump down, his kagane activated as all four tentacles would be flaring in the wind. He would land down for both of them as both of them would stare on and shock, wondering, what was this thing? Izuku would stare towards both of them, his green hair are falling in the wind before he would use one of his tentacles to grab onto Asui, throwing her back into a tree. Slapping her back, he would, she would hit her head on one of the tree branches with a loud thud. She would fall to the ground unconscious. As she would be on the ground, Uraraka would look towards Izuku before she would end up recognizing the same green hair. Wait, Izuku? Izuku would stare towards the, her, but having been in prison, he had completely lost his sense of self, forgetting about almost all of his voice freeze that his parents had taught him for those four years, and that's pretty much exactly why he had became a villain, losing his true sense of who he was, and losing his morals, and just all of this, being corrupted, being so young, being so molded, by the prison that he had turned just completely different from what he had been taught to be from the hero family that he was raised in. As Izuk would stand there looking towards Uraraka, a slight sense of familiarity would rush over his mind, but he couldn't really sense the figure it out at all. He would look towards her before shaking his head, rushing towards her, punching her right in the gut, sending her flying upwards. She would all down to the ground, or looking at him once again. Izuku, is that you? She would ask once more. However, Izuku wouldn't give her the much-needed answer she wanted. Getting frustrated, she would charge him right before Toga would jump in, tackling her to the ground. As it would be, she would end up sticking one of her syringes right into her, sucking out some of her blood to use for her cork, before transforming into Uraraka and jumping out, thanking Izuku for letting her do that. As Izuku would just stare down towards Uraraka, as she was on the ground, Izuku would stand over her, using some of his kagane just slamming him into the ground right by her head as if trying to completely just kill her, which she would easily dodge by this as Izuku would jump back, landing onto a tree branch. He would smile towards her, although she couldn't see it. 
You're lucky. I'll spare you this one time. He would open his eyes looking towards her. But don't ever try to challenge me again. Or else you'll end up like your friend over there. Asusuku would jump away. Merely just bluffing, she would rush over to towards Asui, checking her pulse, finding that, luckily, she was still alive. However, it was just faint, and she had definitely had a head injury from being harshly slammed into that tree trunk. As Azuku would continue hopping off, all of the sun a massive explosion could be seen in the distance. He would rush towards it to see fire just enveloping an enti the entire forest as half the trees were already burned almost completely. As Asuka would see this, Bakugo with orange lightning enveloped all around his arms would be beating the absolute crap out of Dobby as Shigaraki would be taken care of by Todoroki. As both of them would be losing, Izuku would interject, jumping in as his eyes would be completely glowing. It would slam Bakugo's head right into the floor, holding it up. As Bakugo would stare towards him, having not been hit basically the entire fight, having just such a power boost by one for all that he was basically just unstoppable. As Izuku would slam him down into the ground, Bakugo whose head would cock backwards before getting up. What the hell was that, he'd say, holding his head. However, Izuku would have grabbed Dobby by then, before rushing over, kicking Todoroki right in the head, who was still in shock by seeing a new villain there. With both of them on the ground, Izuku would grab the both unconscious Dobby and Shigaraki, before yelling for Kirogiri to open up a portal. He would, as all three of them would jump through it, leaving many of the other villains behind to get captured. As Izuku would sit there, catching his breath, all of Sun, he would yell for Kirogiri to open up another portal. He would ask Izuku if he was sure, however, Izuku would only nod towards him. Izuku would jump through looking for four more villains muscular, Toga, Spinner, and Magna. Mag Magni. So, as he would look for them, all of a sudden he would rush across Uraraka. However, Izuku knew who this just happened to be Toga. Suku would eat her before he, Todoroki would open up a portal. Both of them would walk through it, as he now would be standing there without Bakugo and without having been successful at all. Izuku all of a sudden would hear his name called as a TV would have a camera turn on. Izuku would walk over towards it looking on to the just strange figure, the camera all blurry to make sure nothing was identifiable. Why did you pull all of them out? They clearly had a mission to do. No, you're new here and all, but that doesn't excuse this behavior. Well, they all would have died if I didn't do so. Two UA students were completely beating them. Both of them were unconscious. It's clear that they didn't have proper training or weren't prepared for this at all. I suggest if we want to just be more upfront with this, we have a full-scale attack on UA. However, it'd be when they're least expecting it. All for One would stare on towards Izuku, wondering, is he really sure? If Izuku was completely sure about this, as he was still just a kid, he didn't know any better, and plus this full frontal scale attack would basically be a death wish. If it doesn't work out, they're all going to be stuck in prison likely forever, and when they get out, they'll likely never be able to use their quirks again, just having quirk monitors on them at all times to make sure they don't do anything stupid. So as Izuku would tell all for one to this, he would look to him for asking what he meant by this. A full final attack, huh? Alright. I'll surely think about this. It would be quite the risky opportunity, but it might be a worthy one at that. Hopefully. All for one would then shut off the camera as Azuku would sit back down. As we cut forward a couple days, Suzuki would be walking out of just the villain hideout. 
He would be walking down the streets, still having his stomach grumble. He would put on his mask or jumping from rooftop to rooftop when all of the and he would stumble upon a striking voice. Stopping dead in his tracks, he would stare behind him towards the alleyway, hearing someone speaking. And this person speaking would be Endeavor. Endeavor would be staring down the hero killer as Izuku would be hearing this. Listening to it, he would sit on the ledge of the building as Stain would already have sensed him. He would look up to him once, however, would continue to stare towards Endeavor. As Endeavor would finally stop giving a stupid speech about how Stain should just stop giving up a fight, he would rush towards Stain with a fireball in his hand, charging towards him, about to slam it right into his stomach. However, Stain would quickly dodge this, slamming his sword into one of Endeavor's arms. He would then counter this with another fire blast right to the side of Stain's head. As Stain would do this, or as Endeavor would do this, Izuku would drop down, staring towards the both of them. Well, Stain, I think you've had enough fun for today. You know you won't want to die. So, I guess you're just gonna have to come with me, huh? Izuku would ask this as Stain would look towards Izuku. Hearing this, he would laugh before Izuku's Kagane would activate, sending all four tendrils right into the stomach of Endeavor. He would fall to his knees, choking on some of the blood, wondering who Izuku was. As Izuku would walk over towards Endeavor, laughing. Huh. Oh. I don't have a name, huh? It's a shame, really. Why don't you ask my father? Dragonite, he would say, as Endeavor's face would up just completely owing, just shocked, completely silent, as he would fall to the ground in pain. As he would fall to the ground, Izuku would look over towards Stan, who was completely unconscious. Izuku would drag both Endeavor's body along with Stan's towards just the front sidewalk of the street he was on. Izuku would look towards Endeavor's body, seeing that hole was bleeding, as he would end up grabbing onto a chunk of skin, tearing it off before starting to munch on it, just as something to satisfy his hunger for a good few hours before he went out hunting again. As Izuku knew Endeavor was going to die. However, Izuku also wanted him to still be alive long enough for him to tell the police who did it to him. And when he says Dragon Knight's son, it would only just make it even better. So, as Izuku would walk back towards the villain hideout with the unconscious stain in his arms, he would slam it onto one of the bar tables as all the members still there would look on just wondering where Zuku had just found Stain. Shigaraki would stand up before asking Zuku what the hell just happened. Yeah, I found him fighting Endeavor, so I killed him and just brought him Stain here. You killed Endeavor? Many of them would say, which Zuku would immediately shoot this down. Yeah, but it really was just a surprise attack. It's really nothing special. Anyone could have done it. Anyways, I'm leaving again. I'm quite hungry. Zuku would say, walking out, before he would end up stumbling upon just a couple of people standing out in an alleyway. They seemed quite young, however, Izuku didn't care. Walking up to a couple of them with bull head of all over his mouth as he forgot to put back his mask. Izuku would stare towards them as teeth stained, stained red. He would smile towards them, a demonic smile. As the kids seeing that, many of them would run away, having their fight or flight just activates with them just running. However, one of them just happened to be one of the unlucky few that would be frozen, stuck in place, not able to move. Suzuki would walk over towards him, grabbing him by the neck, before just starting to just chow down, eating as much as he could, saving an arm as he would tear out some of the meat, putting it into an envelope to save for later. 
As Suzuki would get back to the bar, he would sit down as his stomach would still be slightly hungry. Wanting to be full so he didn't have to eat for another couple of days, Suzuki would open up the package with the raw meat sitting there right in front of him. Many of them would gather around asking Suzuki what it was. As Suzuki you would ask them if they wanted some, which all of them besides Togo would of course say, N no, of course not. Togo of course would say yes, having just a fascination with blood, so Izuku would give it to her, she would try it, and would wonder what it happened to be. So, what is this thing? Oh, it's, um, human. Yeah, Izuku would as Togo would look towards him laughing. <laughs> you can't be serious, right? Oh no, it is. That's one of the back that's one of the drawbacks of my cork. I really I mean I can eat human things. They just taste dis disgusting. This is one of the only things I actually am capable of eating that tastes decent, I guess. Togo would look towards him wondering if if he was really true, however, she just wouldn't decide to press it much longer. We cut back to Endeavor as the police would end up arriving on the scene, ha having just been called by Endeavor moments before he had encountered Stain. Once they would arrive there, they would be looking on towards Endeavor, whose dying moments were within just arm's grasp. As he would be sitting there, the police officers would rush over to him asking him, Endeavor! Who did this to you? He called himself Dragonite's son. And that is where part 3 of What If Deku Was a Ghoul comes to an end. I hope you all did enjoy it, and if you did, please consider subscribing. It really does help this channel out, and if you're feeling even more generous and like the video even so much more, please like and comment as well. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.